point that I want to make is at the has how the army in Egypt behaved thus far. Now, this is a, this is a, the tenth largest army in the world. They are very well equipped, very well trained. Basically, by America, they have American equipment, airplanes, tanks, and everything that you ma can imagine, and they are American trained, and they have had quiet but very close relationship, good relationship with this, with Israel, with the Israeli military. There was a high level of cooperation between the two sides. What is interesting about the Egyptian military is that the, the, the military did not take side. I think it was remarkable to see a military spokesperson come into the TV, national television, and say, this is the right of the people to demonstrate. We will respect that right as long as they do not resort to violence. And when the interior ministry only some of their thugs against the demonstrators, the peaceful demonstrators, the army did not encourage them. In fact, the army placed some tanks and tried uh, within 24 hours to separate between the peaceful demonstrators and those who have been sent by the interior ministry to, to harass the demonstrators and, uh, and actually uh, through some act of violence. So here the military played a very significant, very constructive role. And I can tell you that regardless what happened, it is the military now that is going to have, probably will hold the balance of power in the end. That is, whereas the military should not and hopefully will not interfere, but the military might assume the position of the guardian of the transitional period. The military will have to make sure that any transitional period that take place, if it's going to take place, it must be take place under peaceful terms. And only the military, not the police, not the secret service, these are not the people that the Egyptian trust, but they trust the Egyptian military. He might say, you know, the Egyptian military in a way is like the Israeli military. The service in the Egyptian military is compulsory. And hence, these young soldiers are looking at their, at their friends and relatives in the crowds. It is inconceivable for them to open fire against their brothers and sisters. It doesn't work. Can you imagine Israeli military killing, killing uh, settlers or killing people in Tel Aviv? It doesn't going to happen. So the military has been able, in, even though it's been controlled by the Mubarak regime, but has been able to carve its own space and, and therefore it, pre and it presented itself in a manner that now it become a force, a major force in, in ensuring that transitional period is going to, be, it will have to be peaceful, it will be peaceful, and hopefully it will meet the vast majority, the mass demand of the, of, the, of the revolutionaries in the streets. So keep this in mind then. This is so important that when the world is looking, specifically other Arab states, and looking at what's happening in Egypt, probably in Arab states, the first, thing, the first element that will interfere in a revolution like this would have been the military, not in Egypt. And that too preserve something unique, something special about the Egyptian society and it was happening now. <coughs> the, the, third, the, the other element that we have to keep in mind is that what happened in Egypt, being Egypt, it is what it is, it will have to reverberate and it will reverberate throughout the Middle East. As I indicated to you before, I don't believe that the Middle East as we know it, and Egypt itself as we know it, will ever be the same again. In some countries, the change may be much faster than another. But in today's world, in today's technological revolution and the information revolution, it is impossible, impossible, to shield, to, 
the public from what's going on outside, the world, outside their country. They know what's going on outside their country. Whereas I said, the revolution has been instigated by Tunisia, but actually it is the access to information, to Facebook and, and, and to Twitter and LinkedIn and on and on and to the, uh, Google, and then the whole world is open to them to see what else is happening around the world. There is no government today that can contain that to a point where it could completely shut up the internet and not allow its people to see what's going on. This is a major factor. But the more, even more important factor, it's the awakening. There is now an awakening. The people of, when the people of Egypt rise, what we see now, it's a new awakening that is going to reverberate throughout the Middle East. It is no longer just the <coughs> internet, the Twitter and the Facebook. It is now the people's movement, the people's revolution, the people's uh, <coughs> determination to change, to seek change and insist on that kind of change. That is not something that the Arab world today can, can, can continue to stifle. That will change. I am not going to predict to you today, okay, the, the regimes in all of these Arab countries are going to be different in a year or two from down the line, but they will have to begin to institute some serious reforms sooner or later if they want to maintain any semblance of stability. And that is very significant with the Egyptian being able now to, to demonstrate and project to the rest of the Arab world. The th other element that we need to mention here is that whereas the Egyptian government has been using all kinds of excuses, including the Muslim Brotherhood, the fear from the Muslim Brotherhood that they may take over at one point or another, other Islamic extremists which exist in Egypt and elsewhere, that they are the instigators. They are the ones who are, who are causing the troubles and the problems. And the truth of the matter is when we saw and review carefully what's happened in Egypt, yes, there are extremist Islamic elements involved. There were some Muslim Brotherhoods involved. But the truth is the majority, the vast majority of the of the, dem of the demonstrators, of the, I call the revolutionaries, are not, did not come from the rank and file necessarily of the Muslim Brotherhood. They were mixed with them. Because for them, you know, for, for, the, the, for Egypt, it is, <coughs> whereas the, these extremist groups being used as an excuse, they were really not necessarily uh, the <coughs> element or the fact that should have prevented the kind of progress that Egyptians should have experienced years ago. Yes, today if there is an ele open election and a free election, it is likely that the Muslim Brotherhood could win perhaps even a majority. It's possible. Because they are better organized, they are better financed, very disciplined, and they can come out in groves in the hundreds of thousands when they wish to, to, to do so. This is in fact one other reason why we are saying, I am suggesting, that it would be a terrible mistake even if a free and, and, and uh, election is held in September. It might be a bit too early. Because the other secular parties in Egypt have not, are not ready. They need to be prepared. The civil society in Egypt remains weak and scattered and organized. We need development of civil society. You need political party to be able to develop. But no political secular party can develop in the current atmosphere. Hence, you need that transitional period to allow the people to organize themselves somewhat differently, while actually the military is the watchdog making sure that whoever the, the civilian communities is doing, this is going to be their business as long as the transitional period is a peaceful one. So if there is a serious threat coming from Islamist groups in Egypt, in specifically the Muslim Brotherhood, 
it will make far more sense not just to, in order to prevent them from assuming power but giving other groups, other political groups, other secular political parties the opportunity to organize themselves in order to be able to compete as effectively as the Muslim Brotherhood and others might be able to compete. And that's again in support of a transitional period <coughs> that is going to have to be organized and peaceful. And then of course there is the third and the, the other element